I want to get you established with the word of God before we officially get started on this evening's breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy portion of tonight's broadcast. Go with me, please, to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Holy is your name, O Lord. Righteous and true are your precepts, my Father. Oh, Father, you continue to draw us up out of many waters. And you do restore our soul. You lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, we praise you that you keep us in you. That those who truly wait upon you will be renewed in their strength. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Father, I just lift up each and every person who's tuning in to this evening's broadcast and those who will be tuning in in the archived broadcast, that you would minister your love to them, that you would minister your spirit to them. Your spirit is life and he is truth and he leads us and guides us into all truth. He is refreshing. He's holy and he loves us. He's wisdom and knowledge and understanding and the awesome fear of the Lord. So, Father, I ask that you would bless each and every person who's tuning in with the Holy Spirit of the living God to lead them and guide them, to take and lift their burdens from them, whatever may be causing them distress or pain or angst, any type of anxiety or fear, that you would lift it off of them right now, even as they're tuning in. Oh, I thank you, because I see it already being done. Praise God. You know, he works. Uh, and he likes to work fast. It's us that tend to slow him down. And that, that could be kind of... We don't ever want to think we're slowing the Lord down. We're constantly griping and saying, Why is it not happening quick enough? Why isn't it here already? He's like, It ain't me, it's you. But he loves us. And he shows us the, the us part in this so that we can yield and submit ourselves onto him. But Father, I ask that you help these precious ones, each and every one of us, to constantly live a yielded, and submit it life unto you, O Lord, our Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we praise you. Beloved, if you're in agreement with me, will you say amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, 1 Corinthians. Father, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We praise you, Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's start with verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. I got my coffee. You guys got your coffee or tea or water? Or juice? But see, don't get, don't get it messed up. Don't get it twisted. Don't say juice and it's gin. <laughs> stop. Just stop right now in the name of the Lord. Juice! Apple juice. Grape juice. I was going to say watermelon juice. I don't even know if they have that. They probably do. And let's keep the chat holy tonight, my friends. We have live chat going on uh, on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel, on our live stream channel. Keep it holy in Jesus' name. Amen? Show the Lord some respect. Amen. And the Holy Spirit's in, the, in, this, in this place. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 reads, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. It is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. 
Love never fails. All my friends. You know, we started off the broadcast with a prayer. And, and there may be some who are tuning in and you're tired and you're weary. Maybe you've been going through some things. Maybe you've had a season of testing, a season of refining. And you're not sure if you're going to make it. You're not sure. You're just doubting yourself. You're doubting the things of God. I say God forbid, but the reality of it is that many do. Many are, especially in these last days. The enemy is seeking to throw so many temptations, hoping that someone would grasp it and take it and choose it versus the Lord. And the Lord says, love will get you through. Now, it's not this worldly love that we're looking at. And yes, there is a worldly love. There is a love again, I say, especially in these last days, that is seeming to propagate true love. They are actually claiming it that it's real love, God's love. And it is a ideology. It's defined by inclusivity. It seeks to have everybody just uh, be together, be one. Say it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you've done. There's no such thing as sin. There's no such thing as bad. There's no such thing as ungodly. It's all love. Just whatever your heart tells you. Follow your heart. That's love. And that's what's actually going to usher in the Mark of the Beast system. The Mark of the Beast is going to be served on a platform of false love and unity. And they're going to tell the ones who walk in the love of God also known as agape love, that that's not love. As a matter of fact, that's hate. And we don't want hate. So you have to make a decision as to whether or not you are for us or if you're against us. And if you're against us, then we got to make sure you're out. You, you can't be with us or anywhere near us. In these last days, we have to understand that love, God's love, his perfect love, is what we need as our weapon, as our tool, as our character, and as our life. Beloved, it can't be any other way. Anger cannot lead you in these last days. Bitterness of heart? Oh no, you're on a fast track ticket down to the pit. When I say pit, I mean down to a, a miry clay pit that the devil's just gonna keep you there to keep you preoccupied with self-pity and anger in hopes that you don't recognize his filthy lies. In hopes that you don't recognize that love is what conquers. We just read it here. Love never fails. It bears all things. It believes all things. That doesn't mean it believes all things that are ungodly. No. It believes all things in Christ. And it goes on to say it hopes all things, it endures all things. We, we're going to need endurance in these last days. We need endurance in these last days. Things are getting so shaky, so quaky, rocking and rolling to and fro this earth, literally like a drunkard. So many things trying to come against the body of Christ. It doesn't even matter how old you are. You could be a kid. The devil's not even trying to say, I'll wait till he's 13. I'll wait till they're 20. No, they're trying to attack the little ones when they're two and three years old, putting thoughts in the head and saying, no, no, no. And we got to walk in love. We got to train our kids as to what the love of God is because love never fails. Love is a tool that the enemy hopes you don't recognize is in your toolbox. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians as well, it says that the weapons of our warfare uh, are not carnal. I said 1 Corinthians, I meant 2 Corinthians. Second, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 4, it says, actually, I want to read it in verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. It says here, For though we walk in the flesh, meaning these bodies, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We don't war according to our fists when it comes to spiritual warfare. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations and 
arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And I love this part where it says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus. You have to measure everything by the love of God. Not by the love of this world, because again, it's a false love. It's going to take you to a very broad path. It's going to lead you to an apostasy, and you won't make it. But when you walk in the love of the Lord, when you walk in that perfect love that casts out fear, when you invite the presence of the Almighty God and ask Him to fill you to overflow with His love, to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, which is love Himself. God is love. And when you receive His Spirit, you're able to walk in the Spirit and not in the lust of the flesh. And you'll be able to gauge a thing as to whether it's God's love or it's a fiery dart seeking to entrap you, to ensnare you, to bring you down. Many people are weary. Many people are getting beat up in the spirit. The enemy's just attacking them. Listen, we get, we get a lot of emails, but I say this aside from the emails, whether you've ever emailed us or not, there are many of you that has never, you know, you've never emailed us and that's fine, but you know if you, you've been under attack. It's not everybody, but the majority. I'll have to say this, if you're a soldier in Christ, you know that there's spiritual warfare every day. You, you're, you're standing, having done therefore all to stand. We stand from a place of defense. And the enemy is seeking to ensnare us in fallen emotions. Emotions from the Adamic nature. Anger, bitter, it was a bitterness, a resentment, fear, and anxiety, worry, nervousness. Self-occupation, self-reliance. Uh, you know, you just trust in your own self. You can't trust in anybody else. You don't trust anybody. And it's seeking to keep you entrapped from that dirty, nasty tree with this pitiful fruit, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so many have decided to eat or not really realize that the devil's trying to feed you that ungodly fruit to keep you in a state or multiple states away from God's love. Again, the states of anger and, and wrath and bitterness and frustration and worry and fear. But we have to start walking in love, saints. That's going to mean resisting a thing. That's going to mean resisting thoughts that try to come against us that's contrary to the love of God. See, God wants us to love our enemies, right? God wants us to love. He wants us, it, it says here, it says love, I got to go back real quick. Love does not behave rudely. The enemy wants you to be rude, right? Love does not seek its own. So many people walk in selfish in these last days, which is one of the signs of the times. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, perilous times will come, one of which is selfishness. And then the works of the flesh, selfish ambition. It says love does not rejoice in iniquity, but the enemy wants people to rejoice that ha ha ha, they got found out, they got caught. Look at that. Ha, ha, ha. They're uncovered. Look at that. Yeah, your sin will find you out. Ha, ha, ha. That's not love. That's not God. That's flesh. Are you walking in the spirit? Are you walking in the lust of the flesh? Love suffers long. See, we don't like to suffer. I, I don't like it. But it doesn't matter what I like because when I gave my life to Christ, I no longer had a say in things. Where are you at? Why are we speaking when we gave our life to Christ? We don't want it any other way, saints. We got to walk in this thing. The narrow way is narrow for a reason. There's no other room for any other thing that's not of God. God is love. On that narrow path, it's you and love. It's you and God. Agape love, true love, the true God. God Almighty, the maker of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth. And the enemy seeks to bring you out of that narrow path into the broad path. Oh, why do you have to love? Why do you have to not be rude when they're being rude to you? Why do you have to, uh, you know, be the one on the straight and narrow? And everybody looks like they're still getting blessed and they're walking on this broad path. They're just doing worldly stuff. It's a lie. I'm telling you, saints. I'm telling you, as you're, as you're, as you're looking at me right now, all that is a lie. The devil wants us to walk in the five senses, you know, taste, touch, smell, feel, and all that stuff. Hear. And the, and the Lord says you got to walk in the spirit. 
He says, not the things that are seen that matters. The things that are that we see is temporary. It's the things that we don't see that's eternal. You got to walk by faith. You got to walk in me, walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh seeks for you not to walk in love. It seeks for you to remain angry. It seeks for you to continue arguing. When you know deep down inside, God's saying, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? Have I, you know my word. You know... Why are you not letting me go through? Why are you allowing this thing that's nothing to take over when I'm here? And we try to tell ourselves, although it's not us, it's the enemy, it's the flesh, tries to propagate more lies in us. Well, it's because they don't deserve it or I'm justified in my stance and it's just the way it is. They, they, you know, it ain't right. What about me, Lord? What about me? And the Lord says, I got you. You are me. Oh, we got to trust some saints. We got we, we got to decide. We got to decide. But I'm going to tell you something because I got to get started in the headlines. And my beloved husband is going to be joining me right now. But <clears throat> we got to make a decision. It's got to be now. As to whether we're going to walk this thing out or not. As to whether we're going to be as to whether we're going to be walking the walk and not just talking the talk. We're not just going to go to church on Sunday, go to Bible study on Wednesday, go to spaghetti dinner on Friday, and then get into an argument with our husband and our children and our mom and our dad. And everybody's screaming and cussing each other out. Come on. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Who did that? He knows. He ain't mad at you. But we got to start walking in the spirit. The Holy Spirit. Not the spirit of fear. Not the spirit of uncleanness or lewdness and lasciviousness. Or lying spirit. That thing is seeking to, oh, it's seeking to punk you. Don't let it. You are more than conquerors through him who loved you, who died and gave himself up for you. The moment that you start to walk in love. Now, that doesn't mean to be a doormat because love also requires or means in God's love, in agape love, there is a grace. There is a love. There's a holiness, a reverence, a, a respect, a, um, a gentleness. But at the same time, there's boldness. You're not putting up with ungodliness. We can't, we, hey, listen, because I know people watch together. There's sometimes there's two spouses, one saved and one's not saved. And, but, you know, you all come together to tune into this broadcast and we praise God for that. Don't, don't get it twisted. This is not to force one another to do things you know you should not be doing. That's outside of the order of God. That's why it's God is love. It's God's way, not our way. And it's not for us to manipulate and say, well, if you love me the way God said, you do this for me. Now you're playing with fire. God is a consuming fire. You better stop before you get burned. You better show some respect to the Lord. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you're angry, let it go. Listen, when you let it go, you're not letting that thing run buck wild. It may, the, the devil's been lying to you. He's been telling you if you let it go, that means they get away with it. If you let it go, that means they just, you know, they, they, they just let you suffer and they didn't have to go through anything. He's lying through his teeth. Everything the devil says is a lie. That's a news flash. Breaking news, right? That's what we bring to you. Breaking news! The devil's a liar. Everything he speaks is a lie. He's a father of all lies. The Lord is going to reveal to you when you start to walk in the Spirit, which is his love, he's going to reveal to you the truth about that situation, about that circumstance, about what's been haunting you, what's been tormenting you, what's been bringing you pain. Yeah, I... The Holy Spirit bearing witness to every word that I'm saying. Father, we praise you for giving them this word. You've been wanting answers. You start walking in the Spirit. And before you know it, He's going to open up the whole plethora to you. And you're going to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. That was easy. But that was revelatory. But thank you, Lord. <laughs> wow. Because we choose to walk in love. We got to. In all reality... The hour is so late, we don't even have a choice. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things and endures all things. Beloved, love never fails. Love never fails. Love is not a doormat. Love conquers. Love covers a multitude of sins. Perfect love casts out fear. See, fear is a demon. Ungodly fear, the spirit of fear is a demon and it attacks and it paralyzes. And God says, my love casts it out. My perfect love brings that thing to shame because it's been, it's been trying to bring you to shame. So many walking in fear these last days. He says, walk in the spirit. 
Ask, ask me for more love. I'll pour it out to you. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened on to you. Lord, pour out on me your love. Father God, baptize us in your love. Just say it with me, saints, because I got to get the broadcast with the headline started. But just say it with me. Ask the Lord. Say, Jesus, baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Fill me to overflow with your love. Say it again. Say, Jesus, baptize me. Hallelujah. With your Holy Spirit. Fill me to overflow with your love. Love is a secret, but not the secret like that book, New Age book. No, that's that's pompous. That, that's really a doctrine of demons, that stupid book called The Secret. When I say love is a secret, it's not really a secret. Um, but love is the tool that the enemy hopes you will never walk in. <laughs> Start walking in it and watch him run. Oh, hallelujah. Beloved, if you receive that, will you say amen? Amen. Ah, oh, amen. Hallelujah. It's all right. We can clap. We can, we can give praise to our Lord. Give praise to our King. Open Your Eyes People is an end time publication broadcast with specific focus on the signs of the times, end of the age, the day of the Lord quickly approaching. This is Evangelist Anita Fuentes. Open Your Eyes People brings you the latest in breaking news world headlines, matching Bible prophecy. God said in Isaiah chapter 46 verses 9 through 10 that he declares the end from the beginning. Are we living in the last days? Is all that is happening been prophesied in the Bible? Are we the last generation? Are we headed for the greatest tribulation that the world has ever seen? These and many more questions are answered on the Spirit-led broadcast. With over 180 nations tuning in each week, it's no wonder God is using this broadcast to see hundreds come to salvation each week, rededicate their lives, and sharpen their walk in the narrow way. We need your help. We cannot do this alone. We need your help to keep and expand the work of this broadcast ministry to reach even more souls. The time is short and the day is dawning. Donate today. www.emof.org That is www.emof.org We need your donations. Visit us today.